My name's Keith Bannerman. I'm part of the executive committee of the Australasian Tunnelling Society. Um, we're a committee which is initially founded in 1974 as a joint venture between the Engineers Australia and the Oz IMM, which is um, a mining organisation, which really highlights the we cover both civil and um, mining aspects in the work that we do. The members are made up of contractors, clients, suppliers, academics from the entire region, the Australasian region, Australia and New Zealand. So it's not just purely engineers, but there are other professions involved. Um, with a peak industry for anyone digging a tunnel, which is greater than a metre, up to 30 metres. So any hole um, excavated, someone from the ATS has been involved in some way, shape or form. The ATS also has a strong history of collaborating with regulators, um, whether it was through the generation of the Tunnelling Code of Practice in New South Wales or working with Safe Work Australia in the recent revision of the Tunnel Guide, um, which was 2013 revision. So we're a group of volunteers. Uh, we are a member of EA as a technical society. So last year we had our triennial tunnelling conference. I think we had about 1,500 people attend over the three days. Multiple uh, parallel streams running across the, the three days of the tunnelling conference as well as uh, tunnel visits to the M4 East and North Connects projects. Uh, as part of that discussion, um, the ATS initiated this working group. Um, the working group brought together people from all of the major tunnelling projects currently underway in Sydney. So Stage 1B, Stage 2, Sydney Metro and North Connects. It brought people from the client side, the contractor side, um, and people from even upstream. So we had RMS representatives in the room who wouldn't necessarily be involved in this sort of a project. So this sort of a working group isn't new for the tunnelling industry. Uh, internationally, we're also affiliated with the ITA, the International Tunnelling Association. They had their World Tunnelling Congress last week in Dubai, which I was luckily enough to attend um, through sponsorship from the ATS. They have 14 working groups. One of those is a health and safety working group. So as part of that initial workshop, um, we asked a series of questions of the participants. Um, one, the first one was how important is it that we address the issue of silicosis in tunnelling? Um, some people were concerned what the results of this question might be. Um, they had no need to be. The industry has a strong history of trying to work together and trying to address, address issues, whether they're technical or safety. There's always a very pragmatic approach from people who are involved in the tunnelling industry. And why was it important? There's some great points that are put up there. So these are all by tunnelling contractors and clients highlighting why they believe it's important to deal with the issue of silicosis. Um, and there were some pretty common themes through there that it's it's our problem, it's our industry, we need to own the issue. And the next question that was asked was about engaging with the regulator. Again, ATS and the tunnelling industry more broadly often leads when it comes to this sort of initiative. Um, again, the question was asked, how important do you think it is to collaborate with the regulator? Again, very strong correlation. So again, one being not important to engage, five being very important. Um, so the makeup of this cohort included senior tunnelling managers from all of the major projects and the health and safety representatives from the client organisations as well. And these are some of the reasons why um, the attendees believed it was important to engage. Um, mainly one of the key issues, and it's been raised a few times, is uh, the technical understanding of is something better than something else. Um, each tunnel is different and I think that's important to highlight. Um, maybe there isn't a one-stop shop when it comes to solving the silica problem. So unfortunately each tunnel is bespoke, it's its own machine, the way you build it's different, so you need to address those issues. Unfortunately it makes it quite hard to unpack for those who aren't involved day-to-day -day in the tunnelling industry. We're hoping that through the consultation um, of the ATS working group that we've established we can help drive what is best practice um, and share some of this great knowledge which has been developed in Sydney. Over the last 30 years, we've had a, a, a real um, uptick in the construction of tunnels in the Sydney um, basin. So some of the challenges that came out of that initial meeting, training and awareness, um, can't see silica. It's um, not always the easiest thing to convince people to wear a dust mask for extended periods of time. Um, engagement and collaboration across tunnelling projects was a key initiative. Uh, a lot of the tunnelling professionals work uh, on various jobs throughout their working life. Um, they collaborate informally, 
um, uh, is, is often the case, but who's looking to formalise some of that interaction to uh, spread some of that knowledge more broadly within the industry. The other one was to strengthen our standards legally and contractually. That's been talked about already. Um, improving the process of health surveillance. Um, everyone does it a little bit differently. So I suppose it was around um, identifying these uh, the SEGs and um, so we can compare apples with apples across projects and time uh, and highlighting the leadership of the importance of health uh, in the tunneling industry. Some of the solutions that were also discussed so leadership from the highest levels across these project, as discussed, it was a key goal for this working group to make sure that it was project team members who were involved in the discussions, not necessarily corporate um, types. Um, sometimes there's a disconnect and we wanted to make sure we got to the people who have the knowledge and the power to change things on site. Again, all key New South Wales projects were involved and it was about developing practical standards um, through the development of whether it was the last revision of the Safe Work Australia Guide for Tunnelling, um, the ATS has been pragmatic in highlighting um, some controls which haven't been practical or, in, in, in fact, impossible to achieve. So it, it's important to address um, and put forward solutions which are practical in nature, as well as developing um, training and awareness packages uh, with the guys from Safe Work New South Wales and the other key stakeholders, whether it be Metro or any other major client delivery team. So the key areas of focus uh, for the group going forward, so standardising practices across the industry where we can, understanding what is good practice, uh, raising awareness, it's pretty simple, um, but as we have more and more new entrants into the market, putting on orange shirts, they need to know why why do we have to wear dust masks? Uh, and identifying key work tasks through this process, there's been some activities which you wouldn't necessarily assume would be high risk, have in fact turned out to be. Um, the working visit, the routine visits by the safety, the safety and health professionals um, has recently started. Um, so actually getting into the, the nuts and bolts of um, defining the challenge that we have in the tunneling industry. One of the key ones, though, as well, was sharing lessons learned on dust control between projects has been a really strong, um, really strong area of focus so far for the group. With, without beating around the bush, there's a couple of multiple contractors that work in the Sydney Basin and they operate slightly differently. We're trying to understand what are the best practices that one contractor op used to operate and what are the difference from another contractor. It's important to get that sort of collaboration in an open professional environment. So the key points, it's about the effective management of the work health and safety risks, uh, and it relies on a collaborative approach from the entire sector. So throughout these discussions, there's been a strong focus on um, the role that the client plays. Uh, it's important. The schedule challenges which we face on these projects have been highlighted multiple times and the impacts that they have in the delivery phase of projects. Engaging with the professional engineering community is also important, um, making sure that those people who are doing design work understand um, how important it is to design something which doesn't create excess dust, uh, minimising cross-sectional excavation, those sort of things. Um, and also the industry, industry groups such as the ATS are a great way to actually bring people together from multiple areas. Uh, I'm not sure if this level of engagement would have happened without an industry group, group like the ATS. It's just the collaborative, pragmatic attitude of tunnelers that we have in the industry. Thank you.